finally, I can get divorced. Yes, now we can walk together openly. I can't wait to see my grandchild's face. They appear to be triumphantly proud of themselves. Just divorce me already, Reese. To my husband, who was acting all high and mighty, I revealed a certain fact. Actually, I have something I want you to see. As I said that and showed them something, their faces turned pale in an instant. My name is Reese, a 34-year-old office worker. I recently got married to a man named Hector. We met through our companies, which were business partners, and as a representative of our respected companies, we got to know each other. Being the same age, we naturally became closer. Once this work settles down, how about going out for a meal together? He invited me like that, and it became the starting point for our friendship. After that, we often went out for drinks or meals together. We started meeting up on our days off as well, and he confessed his feelings to me, and our relationship started. He was a reliable man who took the lead, and I had come to rely on him. And as our relationship progressed smoothly, he proposed to me. I want you to be my side forever. Please marry me. Yes, gladly. I was truly happy when my beloved partner proposed to me. When I shared the news of our marriage with my parents, they were overjoyed. I thought you would never get married. Congrats, honey. This is truly wonderful. They had been eagerly awaiting my marriage. At that moment, I keenly realized how much freedom I had enjoyed until now. So, for the sake of my parents, I made up my mind to have a happy married life and put their worries to rest. What, Reese? Are you finally getting married too? Yes, I can finally fulfill my duty as a child. Congrats! I'm glad you found a good person. Thank you. I'm happy. My best friend Mandy is celebrating my marriage as if it were her own. Mandy got married four years ago, and like my parents, had been eagerly awaiting my marriage. So I was really glad that I could share the news with her. Come to the wedding, okay? Yes, of course. I'd like to meet your fiance beforehand, you know. I need to see with my own eyes if he's the one who can truly make you happy. <laughs> Thanks. Then let's go out for drinks together next time. Smiling at my excited best friend, I went out for drinks with her and my partner on another day. Mandy quickly accepted Hector, and it didn't take long for them to become comfortable with each other. Hector, please take care of Reese. Yeah, count on me. I will definitely make her happy. While watching my best friends exchange words, I couldn't help but feel a little embarrassed. A few months later, Hector and I had our wedding ceremony. Currently, we are happily enjoying our newlywed life. Even though both of us work, my husband can't cook, so I take care of the cooking. In return, he takes care of cleaning and laundry. We manage to maintain a happy newlywed life by balancing our responsibilities. On our days off, we went on drives together or enjoyed watching movies at home, creating enjoyable memories. Both my husband and I were busy with work, so it was great to have such fun activities on our days off. Whenever I cook. My husband always appreciates and enjoys the meal, expressing his gratitude. I truly think he's an amazing husband. For a while, we were living our happy newlywed life like that, and we started spending time with Mandy and her husband Ethan as well, as a group of four. We went camping and had barbecues, creating many cherished memories. Since we were all the same age, it felt like we were back in school. A year had passed since our marriage. 
and I was surprised by how enjoyable married life could be. I had been so focused on work that I honestly thought marriage was optional. But living daily life with my husband brought me unparalleled happiness. However, it seemed that nothing is perfect. Around three years into our marriage, a small problem arose. It was the presence of my mother-in-law. Initially, my mother-in-law treated me normally, but recently, she has become quite cold towards me. Reese, when are you going to quit your job? Huh? I don't have any plans to quit my job. What? Don't play dumb with me. If you keep focusing on work, you won't be able to have children, you know? You're already behind schedule as it is. Wait, behind schedule? Yes. You are already in your mid-thirties. Having a child at this point is going to be difficult. Anyway, hurry up and get me grandchildren. My mother-in-law suddenly started yelling at me like that. It happened when we were alone in the kitchen, cooking together. I was taken aback and couldn't say anything in response at a moment. And I was quite shocked. Is it true that I'm behind compared to others? Are people around me also seeing me that way? Is it abnormal not to have children at my age? I found myself lost in such thoughts. Now I can understand that my mother-in-law was just unreasonably angry at the time. But back then, I was shaken by her sudden blame. I ended up blaming myself. Am I just not good enough as a woman? Reese, what's wrong? You seem upset. Well, I actually talked to Hector's mother and... I told Mandy about my mother-in-law. Oh, that sounds awful. How about you and your husband's mother? What's your relationship like? Well, it's pretty normal, I guess. To begin with, Ethan doesn't really visit his parents' place often, so I don't have to interact with them much. And they don't nag me about anything like that. I envy you. Reese, maybe you don't have to worry too much about it. Just brush it off and let it go. Besides, Hector has a high income, and you're working too. I envy you and your financial stability. My husband is not really making much progress in his career, you know. Well, Ethan is working at a major company, right? That's true, but his income is definitely lower than Hector's. Oh, is that so? Mandy and I have different worries and different perspectives. But just having someone I can talk to like this makes a big difference and eases my mind. I'm really grateful to have Mandy. However, after that, my mother-in-law's harassment escalated significantly. Reese, why are you so useless? I guess working people are just bad at housework. Your cooking is terrible too. Poor Hector, marrying someone like you. How did you manage to win over Hector? My mother-in-law relentlessly showered me with these harsh words. Frustrated, I finally stood up to her. Why do I have to hear such things from you? Hector and I have decided to wait for children to come naturally. We're both content with that. So why is it a problem? Upon hearing my response, my mother-in-law widened her eyes in anger. What? You? As a daughter-in-law? Dare to defy your mother-in-law? Unbelievable. You're truly the worst kind of wife. That's how my mother-in-law and I ended up having a heated argument. That night, as a result, I was scolded by my husband. I heard from mom that you said something terrible. Your mother kept blaming me relentlessly. She said really hurtful things about not having children. Yeah, she said the same to me. 
She told me to urge you to have children soon. Reese, you need to try a little harder. Excuse me? After all, the issue lies with you, right? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Why are you saying such things? I was surprised by my husband's harsh attitude. Well, it's true. It's not my fault. So it must be yours. What? Just hold on a second. Why are you so convinced of that? What kind of reasoning is that? Well, anyway, please don't do anything that would upset mom. I was taken aback by how my husband was blaming me. Until now, he had always been kind hearted and never said such things. So I couldn't believe it. Since then, our relationship became quite strained. Moreover, recently, both my husband and I have been busy with work and haven't been able to have meals together often. With this fight happening amidst all that, it became difficult to repair our relationship. Lately, my husband seems to be avoiding me. He stays late at work and comes home late every day. Under such circumstances, it's impossible to even think about trying for a baby. My mother-in-law frequently contacts us through calls and messages, asking if we've had any success with conceiving. I was mentally exhausted from all of this, and I tried to reach out to my best friend for advice. However, it seemed like Mandy was busy with something and couldn't meet me. I'm sorry, but I've been really busy lately. Oh, I see. Well, that can be helped then. I continued to accumulate more and more stress, and it became unbearable. In the midst of all that, I witnessed something unbelievable. What the? On that day, after finishing work, I had some shopping to do and was walking in the town. That's when I saw my husband. I found it strange because I thought he was at work, so I looked towards him with curiosity. And to my surprise, Mandy was walking next to him. I instinctively hid behind something and watched them with my eyes. Why were they together? That's what I wondered as I followed them. They went into a restaurant with an open terrace. There, I witnessed an even more shocking scene. To my astonishment, my mother-in-law was there. She spotted my husband and Mandy, waved her hand, and invited them to her table. I couldn't believe my eyes. Why was Mandy getting close to my mother-in-law? I was bewildered and didn't understand what was going on. But I realized that my husband and my best friend were keeping something from me. I felt that there must be something suspicious. So I decided to hire a private investigator to conduct an investigation. My husband continued to come home late every day and didn't communicate with me. And there was something else that bothered me. My mother-in-law stopped contacting me entirely. If I didn't know anything, I would have simply felt relieved. But witnessing the three of them together made me even more suspicious of the relationship between my husband and my best friend. And a few weeks later, the investigation results came out. As expected, my husband was having an affair with Mandy. Even more surprising facts were relieved. Mandy was pregnant. It was inconceivable. In other words, my husband had impregnated my best friend. I couldn't forgive them. My best friend and my husband betrayed not only me, but also her husband, Ethan. And my mother-in-law probably sided with my best friend because she got pregnant, not me. They must have been planning to be together behind my back. If that's the case, I will make a move from my side. I called my husband into the living room, saying that we need to talk as soon as he came home. What is it? I'm tired. You're having an affair with Mandy, 
aren't you? Huh? Here. These are the evidence photos of your affair. I showed my husband the evidence photos. He seemed momentarily surprised, but quickly smirked. Well, if I'd been caught, there's nothing I can do, huh? He said that and brought out divorce-related documents. Let's end this. Although my husband said it nonchalantly, it wasn't that easy to just separate like that. If we were going to break up anyway, I wanted to get revenge on them. Yes, let's get a divorce. But one condition. We involve lawyers and have a proper discussion with everyone present. My husband seemed reluctant, but he agreed. And on other day, with the involvement of lawyers, the five of us, myself, my husband, my mother-in-law, Mandy, and her husband, Ethan, gathered for a discussion. You should just agree to the divorce already. Yes, since Mandy is pregnant with Hector's child, there's no choice but to separate. Mandy and my mother-in-law were chatting happily like that. I learned something a while ago. Mandy's husband, Ethan, is infantile. That's why they were convinced that the child in their womb was my husband's. And they probably think that even if they have to pay some amount of compensation, it's just a minor setback. Finally, I can get divorced. Yeah. Now we can walk proudly together, Hector. I can't wait to see my grandchild's face. My husband, Mandy, and my mother-in-law were acting triumphant like that. So, Reese, just hurry up and get divorced. Seeing my husband acting all smug, I decided to enlighten him with a certain fact. Actually, there's something I want you to see. And when I show it to them, they turned pale. Oh, what is this? What does it mean? It was my mother-in-law who screamed. Mandy? Who, who is this man? Moreover, the man in this other photo is a different person. What's going on? What does all this mean? What I showed them were numerous pieces of evidence of Mandy's affairs. It turned out that my best friend wasn't just having an affair with my husband. She was involved with multiple men. With all this evidence, it's hard to say for sure if the child in your belly is Hector's, right? Y you, you! By the way, didn't I tell you how I was being pressured to have a child? Did I? Could it be that you're trying to make Hector believe that you're carrying his child when it's actually someone else's? Huh? Th that's crazy! I would never do something like that! Oh, really? But I remember how you were envious of the fact that Hector has a high income. If you could snatch him away from me, you could get a husband with a good salary. And on top of that, having a child would make you more favorable in Hector's mother's eyes, right? But that's... Mandy was visibly shaking. Hold on, Mandy. Are you saying you've been deceiving us? Mandy, what's the truth? My mother-in-law and husband were wide-eyed as they interrogated Mandy. Ethan and I watched the exchange with a cold gaze. Well, let's talk about the compensation for damages first. Ethan and I expect each of you to pay a substantial amount of compensation. When I said that, Mandy hastily approached my husband. Hector, you promised that you would take care of the compensation, right? That was our agreement, right? But my husband replied, That discussion is off the table. Besides, the fact that you had an affair with another man means I won't marry you. He refused to pay for her part of the compensation. And that's 
a fight erupted between my husband and my best friend, right before my eyes. Well then, since our discussion is over, we'll be leaving. I said that and left the scene with my lawyer and Ethan. As a result, my best friend Mandy ended up burdened with a large debt and lost everything. She gave birth to the child, but her parents took custody and cut ties with her. In a follow-up story, it turned out that Hector wasn't the biological father of Mandy's child. Regarding my ex-husband, I had sent a certified letter to his workplace, exposing his affair. As a result, his affair became known in this workplace, and he was demoted. Since they had a high number of female employees, his affair was considered detrimental. Now, my ex-husband can no longer expect any career advancements. As for my ex-mother-in-law, it seems that she faced a divorce from my father-in-law, who finally reached his limit after she not only failed to reprimand her son for his infidelity, but also encouraged him to leave me. She was kicked out of her house and apparently moved into my ex-husband's house. However, this incident has caused tension between the two of them, and they fight every day, to the point where the neighbors have been complaining. As a result, my ex-husband and mother-in-law were asked to leave by the landlord, and I don't even know where they are currently living. Well, their fate is no longer of any concern to me. As for me, I'm still dedicated to my work. I finally achieved my long-awaited promotion, and even got a transfer to the company's headquarters in New York. Living here, I truly feel that this is a place where dreams come true. My life is far from over. For now, I'll make my primary goals to succeed in my career, focusing less on marriage or romance for a while.